management on projects. So I'm just covering uh, this topic on projects, but it can be actually applied on all the things. Uh, so we'll be covering on the uh, how we can manage uh, projects and then uh, identify risk controls. So what what exactly is a risk? Uh, risk is basically an uncertain event uh, which might have a uh, very negative impact. Some some cases it could be positive, but uh, it, it might end up in a negative way on uh, yourself. Like uh, basically, uh, we'll take an example of uh, if there is a plugin which you have not identified and you are custom coding everything. So basically, if client identifies that there was a plugin, it would have been a cost saving item for him. But basically, even though it's a positive thing, uh, you will save time. It's a negative on your project. Basically, client won't trust you in further occurrences. Right? So there, there can be positive, but it will eventually have some negative impact on you. So risk uh, should be actually avoided in all circumstances. Okay, so basically risk management is identifying this uh, risk and then mitigating this risk, okay? So you can, if you identify a risk earlier stage, it can be like, uh, it won't have that much impact on uh, your project in uh, when, when actually the scenario occurs. So basically you can have a plan and then you can avoid those type of things. Okay, so we'll, we'll take an example. So uh, as I said, like uh, WordPress is a very good platform. So I think everyone can relate to so if, if you are working on a WordPress project and uh, you uh, use maybe during your estimate uh, period, you actually tell client that we'll be using certain plugin and we'll be delivering your project at a certain cost or certain time. And then later on, you, when you are actually working on the project, you identify that uh, that plugin is not supported on your WordPress uh, uh, yeah, WordPress at that uh, stage. Okay, so maybe 12.0 or something. So if if uh, you have actually reviewed the risk management, you had uh, tried to identify the risk, you would have uh, directly noted that, uh, okay, this would have end up as a risk that uh, this is not uh, supported and you might have gone for some other solution. So that's why basically if you try to uh, analyze your risk in advance, you can actually have a better plan for your projects. So why managing a risk is important. So a risk eventually, uh, basically it affects all aspect of your budget, uh, sorry, all aspect of your project. So it will be budget uh, schedule and quality of your delivery. So if, if uh, some uh, thing you don't identify, it will eventually happen, right? Uh, like I said, like a plugin, if uh, you don't identify that it's not supported, when you are actually working on that particular project, it will eventually, you will come to know and that time you will try to mitigate that risk. So what you will be doing, you will be actually custom coding, which will actually take uh, additional time. Uh, your schedule will go further and the quality will eventually drop. You will try to get things done in a hurry and you will have a very uh, uh, angry Lydia as well. So because your schedule and budget has gone over budget, so which actually is very harmful if everyone knows, okay. Uh, enhances stakeholder satisfaction. So if you do it properly, you identify this early stage, then uh, basically everyone will be happy because you will be delivering tasks for your project in time. You won't have this type of uh, uh, scheduled, uh, delayed schedule and everything. Uh, keep team morale high. So if, if everything goes well as planned, uh, you don't end up in, uh, unnecessary scenarios that time uh, basically your developers also don't have to work extra because uh, you are not uh, delivering something in time or uh, there's some issues like uh, last moment changes which happen so basically entire team actually knows what they have to do on daily basis and they deliver the project in time so how, how exactly we'll do the risk management? So uh, basically there are four steps. Uh, first will be you identify the risk. Second will be once you identify certain risk, uh, you will try to assess it. So all the risk won't be of same level. So some risk will be very high and you need to actually mitigate it. Uh, some, some risk might be like, okay, if I actually uh, don't solve it as well, it won't have that much impact. So it's, not necessary for you to actually solve all the risks which uh, you identify. 
and then yeah that that's the next step which is uh, risk response planning so you will be identified once you are identified you will try to see what what uh, solution you have for the all the risk and then last will be you keep on monitoring because uh, there might be new uh, risk which might be occurring later stage so you need to keep uh, monitoring or the risk level might change over time during your project so yeah, uh, risk identification. So best time uh, to identify any risk is uh, as early as possible. So right at very start of your project, if you can identify those risks, you can have a very good plan and then everything can be uh, planned very well. Uh, you won't have to end up in any scenarios or difficult scenarios. So during the brainstorming sessions, uh, mostly for us, it will be your mind map sessions wherein you actually discuss about your entire project right at very start. So this will be somewhere you will be actually discussing this uh, risk. Uh, documentation review. So if you have any documentations, if you go through it, you might find like uh, the loopholes which are present. Uh, uh, there will be a certain models which will be there. There might be no connection between these two models. So if you actually go through the documentation, you might find those kind of uh, uh, risk. Uh, interview with stakeholders so if you actually discuss with your stakeholders you actually know like uh, this this would be more in terms of requirements so if a client is thinking about some things and you have not considered it those could actually end up at uh, later stage as risk because uh, the stakeholder mainly client might come up with some certain new requirements which he had in mind but uh, he did not convey it so those those also could be considered as risk a uh, lesson learned from similar projects. So basically the, here uh, the senior developers come in. So if you have senior developers, they will bring in scenarios they have experienced in past. So they actually will solve uh, better over here because they will bring in a lot of experience. They will tell you like this project we had uh, similarly worked uh, previously and then we had this type of risk. So if they bring in this type of uh, ideas, then uh, I think you can have a better plan for all your projects. So that's why like, uh, it's important to have, uh, when you are having the mind map sessions, have TLs, senior members in this uh, kind of uh, meetings. So once once you identify a certain risk, uh, what you will be doing is you will be assessing this uh, risk. So how much is the likelihood and what would be the impact of uh, each risk? Okay, then uh, you will be prioritizing based on their severity. So you will be trying to identify this risk value, which is a simple formula probability into severity. So once once you get this uh, uh, number, you will be actually putting it in a matrix and trying to identify which are the highest risk or highest impact uh, risk and trying to mitigate those kind of uh, risk. So I will just show you. Uh, to, there are two uh, type of metrics. Okay, one is phi plus phi. So if you have a very big project, uh, if, there will be more risk which will be there. So you cannot actually put everything in three. So there are two, right? Okay, so three cross three. So if you have a small project, you will be trying to put everything in this because uh, the risk uh, number of risk you identify will be uh, less. So it will be easier to manage here. But uh, if you have more uh, a bigger project, you will be trying to spread it out in uh, more columns or more cells. Okay, so only the extreme ones you have to actually solve those in. Uh, uh, those are mostly very certain to happen and will have a very catastrophic uh, impact on your project. So you have to actually solve those or have a plan to actually solve those. Okay, and then. Uh, Next will be your high, then moderate, and low. You will be taking a call if you can actually deal with that rather than actually solving because there will be a lot of risk. Like if a developer is going on leave, it will have a very less impact. If your project is very big, uh, it will span over a year. Having a resource going on one week leave also doesn't have that much impact because it's one year time. But uh, if if you have a small project, okay, it's uh, maybe one month time and he's going on, developer is going on leave for maybe one week. It, it's basically 25% of your time. So that time the same same scenario becomes a high risk because uh, that, that actually has a very big impact. So this, this will be certain like uh, risk assessment cannot be done by an individual. It will be like uh, your team effort. 
so all the members who will be working on your project uh, all the stakeholders will be deciding like uh, what what kind of uh, risk and where actually uh, what will be the mitigation also will be decided by the team rather than individual members okay i hope i got this properly yeah and then will be your risk response planning so basically you have four uh, mainly there are four type of uh, uh, mitigation uh, uh, mitigation uh, process you have so one will be eliminating so you will be trying to actually eliminate the risk entirely so if uh, something is uh, not possible you will be trying to actually eliminate it directly like uh, uh, for example like i said like plugin okay so if if uh, a plugin might be an issue in future you will be trying to custom code it rather than actually going going ahead with the plugin and then customizing it to get your expected result so it's better you directly eliminate so you save time you actually plan it well ahead in time so you actually inform the client as well your deliveries and everything will be sorted out uh, right at very start so you won't have that much impact uh, next will be reducing so reducing the probability or impact so basically let, let's consider uh, the uh, example of uh, a resource going on leave so you can actually have another resource coming in okay so maybe uh, you pass the kt to both the members at at very start so when when the main resource is not present the other resource can chip in so you can actually reduce it maybe the uh, second resource won't have that much confidence or because he has not worked entirely so the work your the main resource was doing the pace would be a bit small, uh, less so that's why it's reduced and not uh, directly eliminate okay next is transfer so now if uh, you identify that uh, certain thing requires some technology knowledge or it's very complex that time you can take a, a, a you can actually go to a freelancer or maybe some uh, outsource or maybe if you consider like a, you try and see resources outside your port so basically right now you are planned with certain resources you try and identify certain other resources you go to other pod members and check if uh, they have this capability so it's more of uh, passing this uh, difficult scenario to someone else taking help okay and last will be your acceptance so even if uh, you you cannot actually solve it or solving a problem like uh, for transfer right right now i just mentioned like you can pass it to a freelancer but there might be a, a case wherein you don't know the capability of the freelancer so if the freelancer cannot develop that uh, module it has a very big impact on your project because it will delay the project further so that risk has to be analyzed and only if uh, it actually solves or is a better solution than transferring the thing then it's basically worth it otherwise you actually live with that or you try to solve it uh, among your project uh, team itself so this this will be certain uh, analysis that the team will have to do and see if uh, passing a project to someone else is a solution or it will actually hamper further okay and last i told like uh, acceptance is just uh, live with it uh, you actually take that risk you inform the client and maybe there will be slight delays or something like that and you actually work with that last is monitoring and control so basically uh, it's not like uh, you will be identifying all the risk at very start or there might be certain scenarios which can occur in middle of the project or when once you start the project so you have to keep on monitoring and identifying if there are new risks which are coming in so basically uh, maybe if uh, someone has planned leaves then he will be informing you like uh, Right at very start, that I have some certain leaves, and you can plan for it. But there might be occurrences where uh, your resource goes on leave, like all of a sudden, emergency leaves and all. So that actually you cannot plan, and also like uh, he might plan your uh, uh, leaves maybe further down the this project. You know? So you have to actually keep on monitoring. So the best uh, time to do this is basically your sprint, which actually happens every week. so you actually bring this uh, risk management doc over there and you actually discuss like uh, any any plan deals or any kind of risk you identify it won't be just uh, leaves 
it might be technology related as well like uh, certain things like uh, maybe database is not supporting or the uh, you have to switch to some other database because the data which is uh, stored is uh, not uh, what to call it uh, supporting well or delivering results as expected so you have to switch something so those kind of risk also can be brought in by the technical people like the developers and all. So you need to regularly uh, review and analyze the risk, assess uh, current like So you will be actually, even the current risk, uh, risk which you have identified, right at where you start, you will be actually assessing those and the impact that will have. Maybe you have put certain mitigation strategies and that uh, impact of a certain risk which was previously high has come down to low maybe. So you don't have to actually solve that anymore. So you have to actually analyze this as well. Update the uh, risk response plan. So you will be actually updating this matrix uh, all over uh, every every week. Now the roles and responsibilities. So basically, project manager is mostly responsible to actually manage and coordinate. So as we know, like uh, most of the uh, processes will are handled by project manager. So they will be actually taking this as a, a, or a holding accountable. Uh, next will be the developers and QA. So uh, this will be the people to identify the technical risk as they will be mostly working on technical stuff. And if there is any occurrences or here we can also include your TL senior developers and everyone. So they are mostly responsible for identifying the technical risk. And last would be the managers. So, uh, like passing the project to uh, outsourcing or uh, maybe to some other port will be the decision of the managers rather than PMs because uh, their uh, decision making uh, authority is not that much. So it will be always manager. So uh, the idea will be like uh, we identify the risk, we assess the risk, give a proper idea to the managers and they can then take the decision if uh, what, what type of decision has to be taken. So uh, risk management uh, best practices. Uh, so foster a culture where risk awareness and open communication. So right now what is happening is uh, this hasn't been practiced much over here in SGI and no one knows the benefits of identifying or uh, working with this uh, particular process. So that's why like uh, I don't see like uh, any urge from anyone to actually follow this. Maybe once someone actually implies or starts using it and shows the value of it, uh, maybe everyone will then start using this uh, project or the process properly. Uh, next is uh, regularly update and review the risk register with team. So this, this can be done uh, during your sprint meetings, allocate proper resources and time. So right now what is happening is we try to hurry in things and we don't uh, actually value the processes uh, that much. So we actually don't spend any time uh, doing this risk management. So maybe 10 minutes can be sent, spent on uh, risk management or identifying risk every sprint. And then everyone can sit together and try and see uh, how, how we can actually do this. Continuously mon monitor and evaluate. So basically this is a PM job uh, to get in the uh, risk uh, management doc uh, during every sprint or uh, even even the mind map session to actually uh, so everyone knows that we have to do this so yeah that that's pretty